Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Ian Arbuck and Savannah Haslow will be sharing their experiences with Star Wars The Force Awakens. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO3. So before we start, um, I just want to say don't worry about spoilers because we have structured the show so that the first part is going to be spoiler free and then we will have a very, very obvious, we'll stop, we'll, we'll let everybody know that we're about to transition into the spoiler section so you will have uh, you know, plenty of opportunity to stop listening before that. Um, so if you haven't seen the movie yet and you really care about preserving your your viewing experience by not knowing anything specific about the plot um that's where you would want to stop listening um all right so i suppose it's probably pretty important before we before we start as well to kind of let people know what our previous experiences are with the star wars series Mm -hmm. um because that's that's a big part of what you're going to be getting out of the movie and looking for in the movie is is stuff that you already know about right yeah um so i'm i mean i'm probably the biggest star wars dork that i know possibly with the exception of my brother caleb um you know i've I've watched all the movies many many times um before they got rid of the expanded universe i had read many of those novels pretty religiously um Gosh, there were so many of them. You watched the f- Clone Wars. I did. I, I'm actually still Ugh. watching them right now because because when they kind of cut off everything in the expanded universe and uh, and and wiped the slate clean and started over, I realized that that was a good opportunity for me to catch up on everything and remain caught up. However, the Clone Wars is. Sh- we all know it, sh- and you're still watching it. <laughs> Thank you for preserving the uh, the non explicit oh, uh, status of this show. <laughs> uh, you can cut that. Yeah, yeah. We'll just have Ryan bleep those out, and hopefully he doesn't have to hunt through the rest of the episode to, to cry, look for them. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, I I probably know too much about Star Wars for my own good. Um, I have been um, with Star Wars my entire life because my grandparents. For some reason, made it a Christmas tradition to watch four through six. Um, that sounds better than a, "It's a Wonderful Life." Yes, it's much better. <laughs> that movie is awful. Um, so that was our Christmas tradition. Then I watched the the prequels as they came out, and then um, I was introduced to the extended universe by Ian. Read a decent amount of that for someone who doesn't care that much, um, and it was good. They I'm of the opinion that they got rid of the best of the expanded expanded universe when they uh, decided what was canon and what was not, and I'm really offended about that. I noticed that you started reading uh, *Heir to the Empire* yes, again today because it's better than what has just come out. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. Yeah, the best thing I think that they could have done for this movie was just to have add Grand Admiral Thrawn in there. Yes, and uh, just tell his story. Yes. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that's that's where we're coming from. Um, so the the more casual uh, movie goer uh, Star Wars fan will probably you know you will have to kind of take what we're saying uh, at face value and and kind of evaluate how much you actually care about that thing, right? You know, mm-hmm. so I I'll be talking later on about some um, universe break like rule breaking things that they did in the movie that that went against like previously established things about how physics works. Um, but if that's not your jam, then, you know, you can just ignore that part, whatever. However, even as a casual media consumer, you could still se- tell some of the things that we're going to talk about, uh, because some of them are very obvious from a storyteller's perspective. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, all right. So let's start off with just some general thoughts. Um, overall, the movie was pretty darn derivative. Mm. Uh, it, it seemed like they just remade episode four and called it a new movie. Um, they, they stole tons and tons of elements of it. Not just like the, the locations, you know, we start on a desert planet and then we, uh, escape there on the Millennium Falcon. We go off to another planet where the rebels are and they've got, it, it, they've got this big temple that they're hiding in and it's a lush planet. You know, does this sound familiar at all? There's a there's a big uh, super weapon that they have to destroy. By the way, all of these things that I'm mentioning right now, you you could have known before the uh, the movie came out because it was on the poster and in the trailers and everything. You know, um, 
they they've got a, a utility droid that they have to protect um all sorts of stuff the list goes on and on um they they have uh x-wings versus tie fighters again even though we're 30 years in the future and somehow they've gotten rid of all of the other space fighters that existed in episode six because clearly those are the two great ones no no, no not, they're not they're absolutely not especially Why? not the tie fighter no <laughs> in no way and you know and we saw that in the in episode six that the empire was kind of moving away from the tie the original tie fighter and making the tie interceptor the tie advanced um it, they went kind of crazy with it in the expanded universe and had like the tie defender that had three sets of the wings of, of that the tie interceptor had and it looks crazy it's like the evolution of pokemon <laughs> yep um yeah, the, and then there are some 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 things that they copied from from episode four that I'm totally okay with, like using the hero's journey um, kind of format, because that I mean that would make sense. They've got a new set of characters mm-hmm. who are just being introduced to this whole huge world of the Force and what's going on with this Jedi thing and whatnot. Um, so the hero's journey makes total sense to use there, mm-hmm. um, and of course they were they were subverting the damsel in distress trope, uh, much like they did with Princess Leia. In the original movies, um, but I think that they actually did that m- like in a much much stronger way here. Nah, yeah, they did it in a more obvious way. Yeah, when you consider Leia's character and like think about her more in depth, um, hmm, she becomes a lot more awesome than you realize upon watching initially. Um, in this case, I think that Ray is clearly great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and very obviously great. Yeah. Um, but I don't think the damsel in distress. It was only from the perception of one character rather than the audience initially. Yeah, and and well, that's kind of the important part, right? Is is what does that character think he's up to? You know, what what does he think the situation is? Yeah, that's that's where the trope I th- comes from. I think the damsel in distress trope is uh, the subversion of it is more from an audience perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, where you were expecting the damsel in distress and the damsel in distress is not a damsel in distress. Uh, she, mm, she mm-hmm. proves herself to the audience rather than just to the characters. Right. And in an action movie, the mo- the easiest way to prove somebody's capabilities is to have them beat the crap out of other people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's reasonable. <laughs> Which is, yeah. But we were, but in this case, uh, we knew she was uh, fully capable before mm-hmm. we, before anybody else met her yeah that's true that's true did we wait yes who did she beat up before finn got there wait spoilers um <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah and then uh oh of course they had a wilhelm scream in there it wouldn't be a star wars movie without a wilhelm scream it wouldn't be a movie without a wilhelm scream. <laughs> so I'm, I'm totally okay with them using the wilhelm scream um but like when you when you take those things and add them on to all of the rest of the stuff that they did that was just basically exactly the same as a new hope but with different names it's you know it's boring it was pretty boring yeah um all the way down to like really little details like when they um when our heroes were sneaking through a compound and there were a bunch of uh stormtroopers looking for them i heard one of the stormtroopers say like on a on a radio we think they may have split up we think they may be on levels five and six now and i was like that's that's a line that word for word was used in episode four. Mm-hmm. Like, what on earth are they doing? I'm pretty sure they put that in kind of as like an quote unquote Easter egg for Easter like. Easter egg, callback. The, yeah. But honestly, with the amount of nostalgia that this movie is slamming in our faces already, there mm-hmm. is no reason for it. Yeah. Oh, one thing um, that I didn't notice was a 1138 reference. Still, I haven't. I I've watched the movie twice now, and I did not spot it. Um, I'm sure it's got to be in there somewhere because it wouldn't be a Star Wars movie if it didn't have a one one three eight reference. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll look it up and and figure it out later. And yeah, um, I think they they were really trying to avoid a lot of the criticisms that the prequels got. Um, as they you know they kind of had to do that, right? Yeah. Um, so before the movie even came out, they were being very vocal about like, look, we're using practical effects now in a lot of cases where we could have just had a, a digital effect, um, to do this thing. 
Um, and one of one of the ways that they, I noticed them kind of trying to get away from the prequels was they avoided all of the complex galactic politics that the prequels got into. You know, Phantom Menace especially with the really convoluted plan on Palpatine's part to become the Chancellor and, you know, like what's with the Trade Federation doing the blocking and the taxes and what's, you know, all this stuff. Um but I think they dialed it back way, way too far mm -hmm. because in The Force Awakens, we get we know nothing about what's going on with the Republic. What is the First Order? What's the Resistance and how is it related to the how Republic? How big are either of these factions? Yeah. What are all these other planets doing? Who's under what control? Mm -hmm. We know nothing except for these people are bad and these people are good. Yeah. And well, that was okay in the first three movies. Um, once we were introduced to the culture uh, of different planets through more through the prequels, then this becomes a very boring view of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I just realized that like in none of the movies do they ever really show us just a galactic map and be like, here, Bespin, like this mm -hmm. is where we're going or something like that, you know, like showing... What they, even when they had the Clone Wars going on, they never really showed us like, oh, here's where the Separatists have their strongholds. This is where the fighting's going on. This is where Coruscant is, you know. So we can clearly see that mm -hmm. that's far away from all the fighting. Um, they gave us an idea through the through what they were saying and how they were presenting these plots. Mm -hmm. Um, but in this movie, it, they completely neglected to tell nothing, us anything. Nothing. Um, there was like, yeah, there there was maybe one line that hinted at. Uh, the relationship between the Republic and the Resistance, but it was like, I mean, it was it was kind of propaganda by somebody in the First Order, yeah. so I can't take it at face value. Um, yeah, I I definitely wanted more details in that on that front. Um, speaking of special effects, they of course were very very good. Yes, this is a Star Wars movie. It's 2015. This is an Abrams movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and unlike what uh, J.J. Abrams did with Star Trek and with all the lens flare and everything, like that, it it, it wasn't awful. Uh, no, I they they did take they did make some changes that um, I'm mostly okay with actually. Um, the like the the lasers felt really kinetic in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, so in the past, whenever you know, whenever a person got shot with a laser. Yeah, they flew backwards. They did a Wilhelm scream. They died. Um, but you didn't see like their their armor getting kind of ripped apart by the blast as it hit them. Um, if if an inanimate object, if a wall got shot, you would just kind of see um, like a spark and then a a a scorch mark. Yeah, scorch mark would would appear on it. Um, but in the Force Awakens, things get shot and like the camera shakes in response to the the concussion of this laser blast. Um, and I, I, I like that take on lasers. Yeah. It made it feel really It feels immediate. like it's actual energy and mm -hmm. something happening rather than, you know, we're, we're pretending here. Yeah. And that, and that um, extended to the lightsabers as well. Mm -hmm. You kind of, you, you got the sense that, um, that there was like a real heat coming off of them. There was, it, it almost seemed like there was kind of a bounce back when like lightsabers yep. hit each other. There was actual physical power to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of going along with the heat as well, like there, there was more of a flicker to the lightsabers and, and to the lasers as well. Um, whereas, uh, in previous movies, they were mostly just kind of a single color shaft of light. Um, but now, now they've got kind of this ripple effect around the edges that looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see if in like a future, uh, you know, like Blu-ray release of, of all of the previous movies if they <laughs> change some of the special effects to kind of match with the new style oh, yikes they've done that before with like the original That's movies. A project <laughs> I, they've got a budget yeah they, you, <laughs> you can tell mm -hmm. um although yeah in, in a few cases i think that they went a little overboard with the special effects um like when we had space battles mm -hmm. the the camera was moving around a lot yeah and it was really hard to keep kind of a consistent frame of reference for mm -hmm. what was going on 
Uh, and and that was something that I was kind of worried about ahead of time because when in the first trailer that we saw, we we got to see that scene that shot with the Millennium Falcon that was twisting in like a clockwise direction, and the the camera was twisting in a counterclockwise direction as we're watching it. So like the ground is moving underneath it, and then there's like a Tie Fighter that comes in from the corner. And, and well, that's a cool shot. That's way too many things going on. Yeah, I can't keep track of who's facing what direction and what's going on. Um, you know, in the, in the dog fights in like episode four you know typically you'd have the camera is in a fixed position relative to the x-wings and you see everything going by next to them you know um or or the the camera is mostly in a fixed position that's moving kind of backwards and you see like the tie fighter and the x-wing in front of it kind of moving side to side um but the but the camera is pretty clearly like in a stable position Mm -hmm. in space um so yeah, the 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 space battles were a little bit confusing to follow. Um, they look they look cool, but yeah. it was dizzying. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also there were I felt like there were like a lot of particle effects that weren't necessary. Um, you know, so like the Millennium Falcon taking off, and there's just cl- clouds and smoke billowing off of it for no particular yeah. reason, just because they could. Yep. Why yeah. not? Uh, what's next? What's next? Ah. They stood. They should have spent more of the budget on their story, cause holy lord, um, it was so slow. Nothing happened until uh, they got around to you know getting to the cantina scene, which is another <laughs> <laughs> another way stupid, that they copied. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was far into the movie. I know I probably exaggerated in an hour and a half, but maybe not maybe not actually no maybe not because it is a two hour and 16 minute mm-hmm. movie yeah and they spent the pre the time previous to that introducing three characters four characters and uh revisiting two other characters mm-hmm. like why just why um i honestly feel like you could condense this movie into a 45 minute to an hour thing and get on with actual more plot things afterward yeah like it's gorgeous, yeah. There's cool things happening, yeah. But it it moves so slow. I was just, mm. and even even um like at the end of the movie, they had the obvious climax. They they came down from the climax. There was a celebration, and then there's more that happens. Yeah. And when they started doing that, I was like, how long are we going to be in this theater? What's going on? Like I, you know, <laughs> I wanted to take out my phone to check the time to be like, what, how? <laughs> and if that scene had happened about halfway through the movie, we could have had a good movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could have had more important stuff happen as well. Yeah, because yeah. nothing important happened. There was like, I th- well, something fairly important happened. One thing fairly important <laughs> happened, and it took like four minutes. So, yeah, um. Yeah, and and so going along with the with the story, um, not only was it slow, but there were also some some elements uh, in the story that uh, that we really didn't like. Um, the romantic subplot uh, was something that really ticked you off. Yeah, it was. Well, okay, so you got Finn and Ray. Obviously, they're going to be romantic interests because that's how this they're is going leads. to be set up. They're the leads. Whatever, it's going to happen. Um, but then you've got. It's just they're telling rather than showing that mm-hmm. um, Finn is interested and, you know, they're they're going to get together and they're telling you a lot. They're doing really obvious shots that are actually completely unnecessary. Verbally bringing attention to those pr- should have been subtle things that yeah. they were doing, you know. Um, I did notice a few subtle things that I appreciated where I was like, oh, Finn, what you looking at there? Yeah, some <laughs> some of the things were subtle. Some of, most of the things were extremely obvious, and I don't, I don't feel like Star Wars should be focused on that. There are many more mm-hmm. interesting things to be focused on. Like, have your love plot, sure, but push it to the side because we've got other things to do here. Well, just wait until the next next movie because I'm pretty sure they're going to reveal that those two are long lost twins. Well, yeah, of yes. course, because that's how this is gonna go. <laughs> oh man, um, there there were also some really lazy plot devices that they used. Uh, like, let's open up a giant chasm yep. so that we can just end this scene and move on to another thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, God, it, it was even like 
I couldn't get over it though. It, it happened, and I was like, "Why did you do that?" You know, there, they, there are these creatures on the ship. Oh, they're going to be important later. Obviously, <laughs> since you're telling us that they're here and showing us to them, showing them to us. Mm-hmm. Like, why? Um. Yeah. G- excuses to have action, right? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of action, though, when they did the action, it was really good. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the action scenes quite a bit. Um, they they had outstanding cinematography. Like there were some cool sweeping shots um, where the the camera was mostly in a fixed position, and we got to see the um, the action going on around it. And it would um, in in one in particular, they were kind of showcasing how good this pilot was by showing like um, you know here here blowing up a ship over here and then like panning a little bit showing some of the ground fight and then as it continues to pan in the same direction you see the same ship pop up and shoot some more things you know it's like that was that was really well done beautiful shot um and i felt like it wasn't too over the top you know a lot of a lot of times in uh star wars movies when you've got like a battle scene um a lightsaber fight or whatever it it tends to it goes on a long time um a lot they they throw a lot of stuff on the screen um cuz they've got a special effects budget right mm-hmm. um and and they and they just kind of milk it for all it's worth i i felt like the action scenes in this one they did they they weren't drawn out you know they for the most part yeah yeah the, and the, and the you know when when you had an encounter between two characters especially it it wasn't something that took like 45 minutes like you know anakin versus obi-wan at the end Mm -hmm. of episode three or anything like that oh man um i did think the last action scene was pretty drawn out but mm -hmm. yeah because they and then they forcibly ended up because they (laughs) couldn't think of an ending (laughs) uh so yeah i guess i was that was almost a twofer right yeah Of, of offenses um yeah anything else to say about the action Mm, nah (laughs) i mean i feel like it was all action and then mild story but that's just Mm -hmm. because we didn't have any story yeah right (laughs) and i I would like more of that please thank you and uh here's here's the thing though right uh, is i've been hearing a lot of people telling me that they loved the movie it was fantastic and i'm pretty sure that they were just like that that the the action is carrying the whole thing for them Mm -hmm. um because they're like whoa Oh, that they had a cool weapon there. I've never seen anything like that before. And um, and I'm interested in character dynamics and how these cultures are mixing and this galaxy that we know literally nothing about mm-hmm. because it's way bigger than we've explored. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, some something that uh, I tend to focus on a lot in a movie um, that is invisible to a lot of people is the soundtrack. Um I, I I mean I've listened to the soundtracks for all of the other six movies probably almost forty times a piece now. Uh, it's ridiculous, um, and I've I've always felt that John Williams really really pushed boundaries with each successive movie that came out. You know, each one was better than the last. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that this one continued that trend. I didn't think that it really um, came out with anything spectacular that we hadn't heard in a Star Wars movie before. I don't think there was much for him to work with. That's true. Yeah. Part of, part of the soundtrack being effective is that the story is effective and moving and the soundtrack adds to that and you are overwhelmed with emotion from both sides. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> in, yeah. So in like episode one and like episode, uh, three, the 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 new like hit pieces that were clearly from that movie that you'll always remember from that movie were during the epic lightsaber battle mm-hmm. towards the end of the movie right yes um and and so those were big epic choral pieces very 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 strong and and memorable um and instantaneously recognizable mm-hmm. when you hear them um and i mean this the the force awakens actually didn't really have too much to to put that kind of thing in yeah you mentioned memorable but i don't specifically remember anything as being particularly amazing mm-hmm. in the in the movie as in a whole in the movie <laughs> as a whole like <laughs> yeah. it was some parts were pretty good but nothing and it was only small parts that they didn't explore as much as i felt felt they needed to mm-hmm. um there's only one scene that sticks out to me and We'll talk about that later. later but, after the spoiler yeah. 
uh, break. Yeah. But that's the only thing that sticks out to me, and I there wasn't much of a soundtrack to that. Yeah, and the 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 only really new piece that I noticed uh, was the the theme for the resistance, um, which was you know kind of it was it was pretty cool. It was kind of you know military uh, influenced, um, but not in like a uh, a parade march way that that mm-hmm. the Imperial March was right. Um, and uh, but but they did make good use of previous musical themes from like the original series to kind yeah. of give clues about um about the the relationships between uh characters and the original series mm-hmm. um yeah i probably shouldn't go into that too much more <laughs> um so yeah so let's let's talk about some really specific things elements of the movie and this might delve into a little bit of spoiler territory but not too much yeah um so bb8 we saw a ton of him before the movie. Mm-hmm. He's all over all of the marketing stuff. I was highly stuff. suspicious of him. Yeah, I, I was. I was so afraid that he was just going to be a, an R two clone, or just terrible in general. Yeah, exactly. Um, but happy to report, he's not. Mm-hmm. He's so much more than that. Um, so for one thing, he's got a very different personality from R two. R two is sassy as all get out, but um, but only in a way that you ever notice. From like the other characters through C three PO, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and it's fantastic. But and I didn't expect that from BB eight. And if I had gotten it, I would have been not thrilled because mm-hmm. that's not interesting at this point. Um, he's he's a lot like a puppy. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it's very very cute. But he is you know highly intelligent and an actual character, not just a pet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he like when when a Unlike a puppy, uh, he's actually focused when he when he needs to be. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, he he actually has a lot of different tricks up his sleeve uh, in the in the tech area. Um, so even though in terms of like mobility, both uh, R two and and BB eight would have trouble with like stairs and things like that um they both have different solutions for those kinds of situations. Mm-hmm. Um, and there there were a couple of times in the movie where I, like. BB-8 did something, and I was like, whoa, whoa, that was cool. Like, yeah. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, so, yeah, I, I appreciated BB-8 actually mm-hmm. a lot. Um, unexpected plus. Yes. <laughs> um, I also liked the really subtle variants on Stormtroopers. Um, it wasn't as, like, explicit or obvious as, like, these ones are Scout Troopers and these ones are Storm Troopers, you know, the way that we had in the original series. Um, but they, you know, you saw ones, you, you saw Storm Troopers throughout the, the ranks that were carrying different variations of uh, of gear. You know, mm-hmm. some of them might have um, an extra, like, strap on for... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, oh, wow. Uh, an extra, like, chest strap for, <laughs> for some gear that... <laughs> God, I can't. I can't recover from that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Yeah. So there were different types of stormtroopers. It would have been more interesting if they had, you know, different divisions of them doing obviously more different things. Like they have them carrying different gear. Yes, but in a platoon, there's just a bunch of random stormtroopers with different stuff doing different things. Uh, in a couple of the scenes, and I would have preferred like this. Uh, these guys have a specific task and are uh, designed for a specific task. And our force, our forces are made up of like a section of these and a section of these that mm-hmm. work together in in a supportive ways. Rather yeah. than these are just a bunch of random. This is just a bunch of random equipment. We'll just give you, and you can go out. Have gotcha. Um, yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure that they will uh, when they come out with some some more detailed like the the visual dictionary or whatever of of uh the force awakens they'll probably name each of these different types of stormtroopers mm-hmm. um explicitly uh but but right now you know it's not like we can't we can't just take a look at them and go like oh what that's your purpose yeah i know that um which is okay because i mean that that would have been a detail i think that would have bogged down the movie yeah um but they they could have been more uh they could have showed us more uh in yeah. a better way mm-hmm um, I did like, there were a few signs of technological advancement that, that I appreciated, like, uh, the, the new version of the Imperial shuttle that they've got. Um, A, it looked sick as hell, <laughs> but, uh, also, I mean, it, it wasn't the same, which is important. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the TIE fighters and the X-wings. Uh-huh. 
which did did have some you know changes to them uh but they look exactly the same mm-hmm. ah, all right um i i really loved the the way that um people on jack who mostly seem to settle around the wrecks of old military vehicles um, because we we know that there was a, a a big battle there between the uh, rebels and the empire way back in the day, mm-hmm. um, and and so since this is a desert planet, there's nothing to do there. There's no economy. You know the the junk that you get from these machines becomes uh, precious commodities, right? Mm-hmm. And also their husks become like just instant shelter. Yeah. Um. So I I re- I really liked seeing the people living. Uh, these communities that were kind of huddled around these big, massive metal structures that just kind of happened to be there because... And it also gives you a sense of proportion um, mm. that we don't always have. Is This is how big a freaking ship is. Yeah, like that's true. These are, these are just random people scooting around the desert doing stuff. This is a giant spaceship. It's it's one thing to see on a piece of paper like the the Imperial class star destroyer is five hundred and fifty meters long. It's I, I don't is, actually know that what is, it is this many people, and this no. is the shadow of a person compared to a diagram of the fighter. <laughs> uh, no, these are fi- things half buried in sand. Uh, people are running around by them. Mm-hmm. Uh, even their buildings, their little buildings that they have are. Yeah, built Com- of of scrap built from of, those built things. Built of scrap completely like but they're nowhere near the size of the things. No. Yeah. It's like an ancient ruin mm. and it's pretty cool. Oh, speaking of Jakku, mm. uh I noticed that nobody in the movie could agree on how to pronounce it. Yeah, <laughs> Jakku. 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 Ja- Jack. Jakku. <laughs> um let's talk about that lightsaber. Let's talk about Kylo Ren's lightsaber. All right. I still think that the design is really dumb. I think the only reason that design would be any good is if you are pre- you are preparing to combat other Jedi, because that hilt is a good defense against uh, lightsabers that could potentially push down yours, slide mm-hmm. all the way to the handle, and grab at your hands. Even though I still believe that since there is metal around those parts, that uh, a lightsaber that slid down there would still just slice through that. And yeah. 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 It could have been that, designed better. That's just but me. <laughs> that That's the only use I could see. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I, mm, who's yeah. going to fight? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there's, uh, Finn, and, and I mean, for, okay, from a, from a real world point of view, obviously we know why they did that. Because the bad guys always have to have cooler and cooler lightsabers yeah. every time that we come out with a movie. It all started with Darth Maul. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and so they've they've always had nobody's ever just had a regular lightsaber anymore. This uh that lightsaber also you know it reminds me of a you know traditional knight in Earth mm-hmm. perspective, a big old claymore or something. Uh, yeah, and I suppose that kind of goes with the character almost or that really does fit with his yeah. fighting style and where the way that he was wielding it it's mm-hmm. true yeah yeah and i don't know if they based the saber off of that idea or they worked with that idea to fit the saber mm-hmm. but either way that actually does work for him yeah um from from a standpoint of what we've seen before it seems pretty stupid <laughs> but in this case uh it it could be interesting with a little more development yeah. <laughs> I, lo- I love the way that you adjusted your glasses before saying development <laughs> His headphones are itchy um so yeah finn uh in terms of dialogue finn kind of sounded like he was just john boyega hanging out in real life yeah the dialogue across the board was pretty um earth modern mm-hmm. uh like the people the characters in the original trilogy they sounded far more formal. They sounded more cultured um, from a different place. Um, mm-hmm. But when I hear Finn talking, Ray sometimes talking, Poe talking, they sound like they're from here. Yeah. And I don't want that. That takes me out of the movie because I'm like, I mean, I that's dialect. That's um, a way, a style of speech that is very common to us right now. Mm-hmm. And while it's relatable not something i want to see in a galaxy far far away yeah and 
from from an in universe perspective, I can see it being okay because you know it's it's been thirty years. So the however, the considering popular... his backstory, it doesn't make any sense right. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, and and even like even the time difference, but also the space difference, right? Because there mm-hmm. there's a big galaxy. There's probably going to be different styles of speech that develop in different areas. Um, but his way of speaking is a very social style. Yeah. Which is mm-hmm. not something doesn't, you would expect of that character. Doesn't make much sense. No. Um, he's the humor, the style of speech all across the board, again, is very, um, you know, it's 2015 humor. It's that formulaic uh, make a comment, pause, clarify the comment in a rush because it, it could have meant something else. Mm-hmm. It's it's that very we hear that all the time. We heard it earlier in this episode, recently. didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> but we hear that all the time and it just doesn't work in this universe, I mm-hmm. don't think. Not with those characters. Yeah, and after you after you mentioned that to me and I was watching the movie a second time, I really yeah, I could see it and I couldn't unsee it. Or mm-hmm. unhear it, whatever you want to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ray's athleticism. Um, she, yeah, she was all over the place using the terrain to her advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, and that probably could have been done a little bit more. Yeah, uh, I, I wish it would have been done more because that's one of that's an area she's highly skilled in is mm-hmm. terrain navigation. She's and built for it. She's she's built for it. She's done it all her life. She's constantly doing dangerous things. Uh, using her own body as her only tool basically Mm -hmm. um so i feel like that could have been i mean her her default weapon was something that can be used to traverse terrain pretty easily so yeah and so that was considering her backstory i would have liked to see a lot more of that from her i would have liked to see these characters um be more of what um their past dictates they be Mm -hmm. yeah um I did. I did notice that you know, like they they did uh, take the Finn's past into account when he was uh, presented with situations where he had to use different weapons. Mm-hmm. His familiarity with them really came into into play mm-hmm. when he was trying to use them. Yes. Um. And uh, finally, where the heck were the aliens? We encountered them on Jakku, or however you decide to pronounce yeah. it. Um. And that was a densely alien populated planet. Yep. Um, but and on one other, one other. Yeah, in the in the cantina oh yeah, in the scene. cantina, of course. Which I mean, the, almost shot for shot, not not shot for shot, but like you could see that they were appealing to the people who complained when George Lucas changed the cantina scene and did things like took out the Wolf Man. Mm-hmm. You know, like you he he wasn't there on in the this new cantina in the same you know kind of angle or anything but you could tell that they put him there kind of as as a like we gave you a present guys yes. <laughs> but literally the only two alien populated places were the cantina and jakku mm-hmm. and there were the rest was human and that seems ridiculous to me considering that uh previously we had had quite a few more aliens in the uh, cast, yeah, and especially if you're, especially with the developing culture um, aspect of it, it's just not interesting to have all humans. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I mean, it, it makes sense for the first order not to have any, yes, because that's... that's part of their their evilness, right? Yes. Is racism. Um, but yeah, in the in the resistance forces, we saw I think a total of uh one pilot, um. Mm-hmm who was not human and a couple of people at the base yep who weren't but there were crowds of humans yep yep and and in the uh in the original series it there was you know obviously a a budget and uh technical reason for that because they couldn't afford to have complex uh outfits for all of these different characters yes. so um they had to tone down to bring it back for for how many aliens they had um but by by episode six, you could see that that was changing. They were able to do more. Um, you know, they had a, a few pilots who weren't human. They had quite a few, yeah, people who like in the planning room who uh, were Mon Calamari mm-hmm. or Celestin or whatever. Um, humanoid. Yeah, uh, humanoid is fine. I just want aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and there, th- yeah. There's not really much of a reason for for that. 
Yeah. In, the, in 2015. You got the budget. <laughs> You're not racist anymore, probably. <laughs> Disney. Not racist since 19... 19- Okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Since Walt, Nis- Walt Disney died? Maybe. maybe? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that's that's it for the non-spoiler stuff. Um, so if you are about to leave us, please go ahead and... Uh, watch the movie? Well, yeah, wa- watch the movie if it sounds like it interests you, based on, based on what we've said here. Um, but also, uh, if you have any feedback for us... Uh, go ahead and hit the contact button uh, on our webpage. So that go back to the the show notes at uh, um, thenexus.tv slash so3 and hit that contact button. Um, also, if you have any ideas for things that we should review or if you have experience with something that you want to review, get in touch with us the same way. All right. Now we'll, we'll give you a few seconds here to, to turn it off so you don't hear any spoilers. Go away. Bye. See ya. All right, spoilers. We're just gonna we're 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 just gonna let it all go right here. Yep, yep. Oh, should we say the really big spoiler right now? Right yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. Han dies. <laughs> 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 Uh, that was mean. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so so these are these are things that I wrote down as the uh, movie was going the second time because I, I brought a notebook with me into the theater and was trying to write down in the dark. There were a lot of times when I would um, accidentally write on the same line and we had to parse through and try to figure out what I was saying. Um, but yeah, these these are a lot of things that uh, that I took note of, um, literally. Yes. Uh, so imperial military blunders. Ugh. Uh, uh, uh. I've learned a lot about how the Imperial military works over the years through actually a lot of it through the uh, expanded universe. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's, it seems fairly obvious to me for this one. Um, they didn't launch TIE fighters to shoot down a single TIE fighter that was escaping. Uh, that's really stupid because your giant ship with its cannons is not going to aim very well like that. Nope. Yeah, that's always been the case is that Star Destroyers uh, use their turbo lasers against other capital ships and they use their TIE Fighter squadrons against fighters. That's just a reasonable thing when you're fighting. Yep. Not even procedure, just sensible. Yeah, and it's and it's really well established that that's like the, the thing that they always do. Um, and they didn't do it in this case. Um. Also, somehow, their sensors on the planet with the giant uh, super weapon that wasn't ever named by anybody <laughs> on the fr- in the First Order, but was named by the Resistance, the Starkiller Base. Ugh. Yeah. So they're recycling stuff from Expanded Universe. So creative. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, somehow they didn't uh, detect any X-Wings coming down from orbit until they got to the ground. There's a long ways from <laughs> orbit to the ground. Yeah. They had time to be like, you know, usually what happens is they come out of hyperspace and, oh, there's a fleet here protecting the planet. We got to fight through them first to get down to the ground. Uh, no, nah, nah, there's just shields. We'll be fine. <laughs> Who cares? Nobody's going to get in and we don't have to have any defenses. That was the kind of thing that they could have addressed better if they had cut down the movie in other places. Yes. And then like, okay, so we, we've got to bring in um, a, a fleet of some ships to take care of the capital ships up there. And then the fighters are going to go down while, you know. We could have had an actual epic space battle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and made more use of our wonderful pilot friend who didn't do much throughout this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll get back to something <laughs> with him later. A good plot hole. Um uh yeah oh only smoke right only smoke only smoke oh god stormtrooper helmets apparently don't filter out toxins they only filter out smoke (laughs) when is that ever a reasonable (laughs) thing for a helmet to do Uh, couldn't you describe smoke as a toxin also i'm pretty sure that the stormtrooper helmets in the original series uh filtered out like everything just gave them purified air which is a reasonable thing when you're storming you know, things. Every, yeah. You, Anything. You need to be prepared. You need to be protected. Why is this now a thing? You you want your soldiers to be the most effective soldiers that they possibly can. Please. And you can just gas them out? 
Everybody put on your oxygen mask or your spacesuit. We'll just gas the stormtroopers out. No problem. <laughs> the oxygen masks that Ray and Finn were wearing were like these flimsy little plastic things, yeah, too. Apparently like... <laughs> did better than the stormtrooper masks. Oh, oh. man. Um, you can't tell me your technology has regressed that much. <laughs> and there's, there's a, I mean, precedent for that as well, because um, I, I read stuff in like, you know, the visual dictionaries or whatever, e- extra stuff, not in the movies mm-hmm. themselves, but that uh, the clone trooper armor was built specifically to uh, withstand laser blaster fire. Makes perfect sense. Yep. That's what they fight with in yep. the galaxy, right? Absolutely. Um, but then by the time the stormtroopers came around and uh, the Empire had decided that they wanted to have armor that was better against uh, shrapnel and like physical physical objects harming them and was crap against lasers. Why? Plot device to make it so that the heroes can one shot kill these stormtroopers in any part of the body. <laughs> Basically. Um, Captain Phasma. Oh man, was she a disappointment? <sighs> there they, was no point. They built her up before the movie as like, oh man, she is this badass stormtrooper. She's got chrome armor to like dis- distinguish herself. We didn't even see her in a battle. She reports to a couple people twice and then gets thrown in a trash compactor after okay. helping the heroes for no damn reason. Yeah, off right? screen <laughs> as a you know joke reference to last time, <laughs> and it just gets you know. Killed off that way, I guess. I Who guess, knows? Yeah. Who knows what happened in that trash compactor? And most importantly, she gave in to threats. Yeah. She's supposed to be awesome. Yeah. If you're awesome, you're not going to do that. You're going to take a bullet for the team, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, kick their butts. Um, but she just gave in to threats and was like, oh, you're all going to die. Ha ha ha. There's no point in you trying this. And then got thrown in a trash compactor. Like, yeah. What? I'm going to say more disappointing than Boba Fett. Yeah. I mean, he he at least got to use his jetpack once. And he was menacing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, yeah, they gave Boba Fett a bit of time to build up the menacingness. Um, Is she, I think her problem was she talked too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If she, was, if she was just a menacing, like, sharp-tongued figure, like, curt and um, just, like, curt in tone and clipped... You know, just telling her soldiers what to do and it just an imposing figure, she would have been much cooler. Maybe even telling her superiors what to do. Yes. Because, like, Boba Fett was bargaining very hard with Bo- with Darth Vader th- when he was around in episode mm-hmm. five, right? And that was like, who is this guy who yeah. has the ability to, like, influence what Darth Vader does? Right. Um, and Phasma was put in as, like, a mid level officer. Yeah. Who, that's not badass. That's not, not really. interesting. She's, she's middle management. <laughs> yeah, she is middle management. Like, what? Why did, why did she get special pretty armor? She doesn't even do anything. I don't know. I don't know. Um, how about that bowcaster? Chewbacca's bowcaster. Has that been fired before? I don't know. I, You'd think it'd be fired within, like, the last 30 years. Y- well, I mean, like, on, on camera, on screen I know, for but, us. But, like, Han was making such a big yeah. deal out of it. Was Chewie just, like, threatening people with that for, like, 50 years? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Has Han never seen this before? Has he never used it or borrowed it? Or it, it seemed pretty clear from his reaction that he had never personally fired it before. Yeah, which was ridiculous. Because why? Why not? And and you'd think that, like, the reason... Because you only ever see a Wookiee using a bowcaster. And the kind of implied reason is that you have to be really strong to, like, heft this thing and shoot it and not yeah. get, like, knocked back or but whatever. But Han just does it with one arm. Yeah. At one point. Yeah, He's yeah. just like, oh, yeah, this thing is great. Well, <laughs> you yeah, you have to... That thing, that thing has a draw, draw mm-hmm. strength. Yeah, it's a, actually a bow. Han can't do that shit. He's old. <laughs> we, we get to see him running through the halls like huffing and puffing. Yeah, <laughs> run, <laughs> run, old man. Oh man. Uh, uh, how about the jacket of affection? Oh uh, <laughs> man, <laughs> it was. Uh, it made sense when it was a plot device for BB-8 to recognize yes. him and and send uh, Finn. No, sorry, send Ray after Finn. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it became more of a thing, um, which is kind of amusing, you know, because like it, you did have to have a scene where Poe's like, th- "Wait, that's my jacket," you know, like yeah. it's kind of weird that this guy's been running around wearing my jacket this whole time. Um, and so the reason that I'm 
come to call it the jacket of affection is because like why did finn keep it because he really liked poe and why did poe let him keep it because he respected him and then later on finn gives the jacket to uh to ray during a scene where she's outside and she might be cold oh isn't that cute Fuck that. Oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The children don't get spoilers, so they don't get this section either, right? Oh, uh, right? yeah. Yep. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. I think so. Um. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, lightsabers through the chest. That happened a couple of times in this movie, and both yeah. of those times, the person who had a lightsaber through their chest uh, was held up by the lightsaber. When a lightsaber cuts through anything extremely fast, yeah. the weight of a body would pull it down mm-hmm. very quickly. And they'd just kind of get sliced in half from that point on up. Yeah. Yep. They wouldn't be held up like a sword. Yeah, no. That just doesn't work with what this thing is. Nope. Nope. Physics. Uh, Kylo Ren punching himself. He So he got shot with a blaster at one point. Yep. And then he's uh in the leg? In the leg? In the hip? It was in the side. In the side? Yeah. Yeah. So he goes off after our heroes and whatever, and he's like stumbling and limping. And it's, if that wasn't enough to indicate that he's in pain, he, uh, he tries to pull himself out of the pain by punching his wound. <laughs> just like beating on it multiple times. Which makes it bleed more. Which makes which it is- bleed, and so blood <laughs> throws on the snow, so our heroes know he's injured. <laughs> Even though it wasn't obvious by the point, by the fact that he's like stumbling oh, and trying to hold himself up. Um, yeah, the only the only explanation that for that that I can think of, which doesn't seem plausible by the way, is that he's a Sith Lord. He draws his strength from his anger, and his pain feeds his anger. So he's inflicting self pain to be more powerful. I, th- there, nah, yeah, there was a Sith Lord back in in uh, like Knights of the Old Republic two or something like that, who's um, power was that uh he could just hold his body together and keep living through sheer force of will so he was just like basically somebody who has been cut up over and over and over again and sliced and diced you know he's got all these scars and stuff and and so the the, he's a zombie the game mechanic was that you have to beat him like seven times before you finally kill him um but kylo ren is not that strong no he's a pretty boy he's a pretty boy he's wimpy he's weak he he just okay, wants to actually, be like darn the mainer. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I would say that he's wimpy and weak. He can hold back laser blasts with the force. Yeah, but I have never seen that before. What else can he do though? Uh, well, he was holding pe- like entire people's bodies in place. Uh, w- you know, without like it wasn't much effort for him. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we've ever seen anything quite like that before. True, um, but when, when it comes to actual physical fighting. His mental you know. powers must be through the roof, but yeah. <laughs> physical fighting, all he can do is bash up consoles. Yeah, I think... <laughs> he he destroys a couple consoles, and that was, okay, you have ang- anger problems, uh, good yep. to know. <laughs> I did enjoy those two stormtroopers who were marching down the hall and then kind of saw the, the, af- like the, the stuff flying out of the room when he was destroying stuff, and they were just like... About face, going back the other way. <laughs> this is where our route takes us now. Not dealing with it. <laughs> Pretty great. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how are the trees still standing? How are the, the trees still standing? So when they first fire the weapon, um, every the whole planet goes through a ripple. They mm-hmm. drain the sun. They get all that energy. When they release it, a huge ripple wave of heat and energy... Ab- goes across the entire planet. They they make In- a show of the trees being like knocked down. Knocked by this down, blast flattened, wave. everything's wrecked. And then uh later on when they're about to fire the weapon again, the planet is fully forested. Yeah. And not destroyed at all. And lush and beautiful. Well, Although it's, it, got it, winter. it's a tundra. Yeah. It's got winter. Like a disease. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have the winter. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's completely intact. Why? We saw the trees blow over. Do they just like bounce right back up? Those must be strong trees. What? Those really poor trees, though. Like they were, they were cutting down trees left and right while they were fighting too. Yeah, <laughs> they just can't get a break here. That poor forest. Uh, trees. They, they are, are us. us. <laughs> Go to the contact form if you know what that's a reference to, please. <laughs> uh, all right. How did Chewie know where they were at the end of that lightsaber fight? Yeah, so there's this big lightsaber fight between Kylo Ren and Finn, and then Kylo Ren and uh, Rey, and then the chasm 
just opens in front of them because I d- didn't couldn't figure out how to end this fight Plot without device. somebody dying. Um, and then Ray magically is on the correct side to run to Finn, who is you know out cold, and then Chewie appears just in time to save them from the dying planet. Yep, uh, Chewie. Gosh, I had no idea good. where they were going, where they were. They were pretty far out. Yep. What senses? You're not going to be able to track somebody from a ship in that forest that is no. magically not. No. Uh, they not don't down. have tracking devices on them. They don't have technology on them. No. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I can think of would be maybe life signs. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah. Do life signs work on trees, or do they? I don't That's know. never really. It does been that planet have any animals? Maybe the Maybe. animals can survive those blasts as well as the trees. <laughs> uh, it's a magical planet. Yeah. Um, bigger weapon, higher stakes. Oh always. Oh my god, that stupid scene. They're like, "This is the Death Star," and they have a little hologram of it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's the Death Star. This is the Star Killer, and it's like ten times as big. It's like what Earth is to Jupiter or whatever. And they're like, whoa, oh my god, it's bigger. It's the same damn thing, but it, it's bigger. It's, uh, yeah, the same trap that I, I think that the Expanded Universe novels fell into in the 80s and maybe early 90s when all of the authors were just trying to one-up each other with, like, who can think of the biggest, baddest uh, super weapon for the Empire to have? Uh, and it all culminated, you know, we so we had, um, obviously, the Death Star first. Mm-hmm. There were several variations on the Death Star, um, Besides like, the second Death Star, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, there, there was like a stripped down version of the Death Star that didn't have the whole sphere. It was just the the super laser mm-hmm. um, that was controlled by the Huts or something. There were the World Destroyers that were like these big indestructible ships. They always have to be indestructible, don't they? Oh yeah. Um, that flew around and basically just scooped up matter from planets in order to use in their factories that were inside them to create war machines. Um, there, there was uh, the. Uh, oh, I forget what this ship was called, but it was like a tiny one-person ship that had like torpedoes in it that you could shoot into a star to blow it up. Um, there was Center Point Station that did a similar mm-hmm. thing, um, and then I-, I think that it all kind of culminated with the Galaxy Gun, which yeah. was like located at this secret planet in the middle of the the, the deep core of the galaxy uh, and could shoot a projectile through hyperspace to anywhere in the galaxy. How much of the Expanded Universe has the author of Schlock Mercenary read? I wouldn't be surprised if he's read a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but but he, does, he does a really good job with the science. Yeah, he does. Uh, everybody go read that. We should do a, a review of Schlock oh, Mercenary absolutely. later. Um, yeah, so so here we've got this, uh, th- this Starkiller thing that's essentially a galaxy gun just made to look like the Death Star. Yeah. Right. Basically. And uh, and it doesn't shoot through hyperspace. It just shoots all the way across the galaxy, wasting so much energy in the process. <laughs> like, yeah, what they, are you doing? I think they did refer to it as like, it's shooting at faster than light speed, but it... But we can still see it kind of yeah. gently gliding across the whole and, star system. And for some reason, everybody in the galaxy can see this thing when it shoots. Yep, we have, we have just a panning shot of a bunch of different planets going, and a bunch of different people going... <gasps> Look because at, they already know what it is, yeah, apparently. Yeah, I mean, somehow. Like, oh, what the hell is that? That's that's new science. Let's go yeah. investigate it. No, it must be a super weapon. Like, you know what's going on and you're not helping to stop this? Yeah, like, we, they make references to... Okay, so, like, the, the Resistance doesn't have a huge fleet on their base, right? Mm-hmm. They've just got a bunch of X-Wings. They, they talk about the Republic fleet that is located, uh, apparently, exclusively at the their capital... Um, which was in, oh, I forgot to write down what system it was in. Anyway, um, and apparently that got destroyed when, uh, when they shot the weapon the first time. Yes. Um, what was I, where was I going with this? Right. So they are, apparently, if they, if they knew that this was a super weapon being fired as soon as it was fired, they probably knew that it existed already. Why didn't they do something about it already? Right. Good. Ugh. Um, ugh, I hate the super weapon thing. It's awful. Yeah. It's yep. awful. Let's have some traditional warfare here. Or at least, like, mutually assured destruction? Why can't we both have super weapons? Yeah. I don't know. Cold War. Let's, Star Wars, the Cold War. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's have some economic sanctions on the huts so that they can't build their own Death Star. <laughs> oh, man. It'd be like Iran. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Uh, Poe. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Poe survived being thrown from a spaceship crash. So did Finn, admittedly. 
I, but it seemed like he had ejected because he was still in his seat and yeah. it looked like there was like a parachute kind of laying out but, on the ground. But I thought Poe ejected too because he was like, I woke up, there wasn't a ship, there wasn't you, I didn't know where anything was, well, so the, I walked. The words that Poe used were, I was thrown from the crash. And you see <laughs> you see like the the windshield broken oh, on yeah, the front of it. Oh yeah, and his jacket was laying there. Yeah, it was like, caught in the... In he the... couldn't have been thrown more than like 30 <gasps> feet and somehow he couldn't find the ship later. <laughs> Well, if oh, it's yeah. a spaceship crash, you could be thrown really, really far. But if it's a spaceship crash, you're going to die from being thrown from that thing. People yeah, die through that and- windshield that's yeah. supposed to withstand, you know, <laughs> hyperspace. And yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it was a TIE fighter I, windshield. I don't know if the TIE fighter uh, windshield has to withstand hyperspace because typically, traditionally, TIE fighters can't go in hyperspace. I don't know if they've made those changes to them. Yeah, because they're clearly different. Well, they're they're made to withstand high intensity laser blasts. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Um, and you know the pre- the absence of pressure in space. People in vacuum, real life vacuum. don't survive being thrown from car crashes. Correct. People in Star Wars shouldn't survive. Maybe Poe. He wasn't even wearing anything. He was <laughs> no! wearing like, was he even wearing a helmet? Nope. No, he wasn't. He, <laughs> he was wearing his lovely jacket <laughs> <laughs> that he apparently wasn't too attached to because he just gave it away later. Yeah, like, oh, that's man. my jacket. Oh, you can have it, I guess. Um, and they made him is- out to be such an important character. Like, the first half hour of the movie is all about him. And then he's gone. Yeah. Eh, yep. eh, bye. And we think he's dead for quite a while. And then he's like, ah, hey, yeah, I lived. And I'm doing awesome pilot things for a while. Hey, buddy. Um, Let me say right, something snarky. Let me say something snarky and I'm off again. See ya. <laughs> like, I thought. I also thought that that first, uh, you know, in like the, the scene where they... The stormtroopers are all landing in this town and looking for the, you know, the the person with the map and everything. I thought that was a little strange because they're descending on this town, mm-hmm. all coming from one direction apparently. Yeah. They don't spot this X-wing that's obviously parked right next to the tents. It was dark. It. Pff, they've got <laughs> sensors. <laughs> yes. Um. They don't but, go for that immediately because um, clearly that's whatever they are. Two of the stormtroopers spotted it, started running over and got shot. That wasn't to tell that something major was going on over there because there were big laser blasts coming from an X-wing that, yeah. you know. Um that was so weird. Mm-hmm. We can file that one under stupid imperial military dis- mistakes. <laughs> yeah, and and that was middle management mistake anyway. Yeah, right. Um yeah, Kylo Ren's pretty bad at commanding uh the stormtroopers, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um how about that incomplete map? <laughs> so, the- so the map of the galaxy is apparently some big puzzle that nobody has still figured out. Like, guess who has a complete map of the galaxy? R2-D2 and old <laughs> Empire files. <laughs> yep. And R2-D2 is still missing the piece where, you know, Luke is, but we're missing a whole piece of galaxy and you can't just go map it out with your fleet yeah you can't just go over there and be like oh there's obviously something over there no nobody wants us to find let's go look at it that it narrows the search down enormously yeah. And, yeah. and even even when they uh get the piece that that uh you know that's the final piece that bb-8 is carrying for most of the movie um they look at that and since they don't have the rest of the galaxy map they're like oh there are no known systems in this in this map. This is we, I have we, no we idea this where this all. is, even though it's like Huge. right next to the center of uh, right next to trade routes that we know right. of. Yeah, assuming well, we are assuming here that the galaxy map that R two projects towards the end of the movie is oriented the same way the north, south, east, west that we are used to seeing them. Um, but yeah, that there was a trade route that goes right through that section. Mm-hmm. That like we uh, have no idea what this is. We just pass by it all the time. And there, there is, uh, there is like a good ha- roughly half of the galaxy that hasn't been uh, really explored. Mm-hmm. But seriously, you have telescopes. You can see the rest of the galaxy from where you are. You can map out what the star patterns are going to look like. So when you get a, a and- a map of a huge section of the galaxy, you should be able to look at that and go, oh, if we look at it from this angle, then it seems to be this section of the galaxy from the, you know, perspective of course. It's a puzzle. It's not hard. Nah. If you have a map of the galaxy at any point, which they clearly had during the prequels, even. Yeah. And then they had throughout the Empire, because it was in in old Empire files, and R2 had a map of the galaxy... Why don't, like, the smugglers have maps of the galaxy? The citizens who routinely fly, the trade, the traders have maps of the galaxy. People know where stuff is in this yeah, universe. You need to be able to get around, yeah, right? It's Just not Google hard. Google maps it. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's like they're all using Apple Maps still. Um, let's see where we got uh, rule breaking. Ah, serious rule breaking. <laughs> um, I I really really hate it when they establish rules about how physics works in a universe and mm. then uh, it gets broken later. Uh, in this case, uh, the two that I noticed have to do with hyperspace. Mm -hmm. Uh, so case number one, the Millennium Falcon exits hyperspace within the atmosphere of a planet in order to get past their, their, uh, shields. And that's just not a not recommended thing. That's an, you will explode if you do that thing. Yeah. You won't, you won't even, you won't explode in a way that anybody will see because you will just be in hyperspace and you'll be squished, right? You'll be squished yeah. into the planet's gravitational field. Yeah. Cause, cause the reason, like, they established this the first time that they fly a ship off of a planet in A New Hope mm -hmm. in episode four. You know, like, we can't get into hyperspace until we're free of the gravitational pull. Yeah. Like, uh, and also, we have to make sure that we know that we plot out the navigation exactly before we go into hyperspace, because if we don't, then we run the risk of running into something while we're in hyperspace and that's just that that's it that's game over mm -hmm. um you're you're gone nobody will ever hear from you again speaking of never hearing from you again you can't communicate with people <laughs> when you're in hyperspace <laughs> they broke that rule too yes they the 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 rebellion not the rebellion the resistance uh contacted their x-wing fighters who were in hyperspace and told them you need to come out of hyperspace right now were they sitting in hyperspace and not moving? <laughs> hyperspace usually means hyper, right? You're yeah, moving. Yeah, you have to be moving in hyperspace. You cannot hang out in hyperspace. Yeah, just kind of floating there like a helicopter. Did we mention we don't know who the resistance is resisting or what faction they are? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think we really mentioned that. <clears throat> we really explored that name because are they not like the central government? Didn't they establish a central central government before? Yeah, so the... It seems pretty obvious to me that the Republic is the central government that has been established yes. after, after you know, they beat the Empire back Correct. and everything. Um, but the the only real details that we have that they mentioned in the movie is, uh, I think that the most useful detail was when uh, the leader of the, well, the, the leader of the Imperial, I'm sorry, First Order military forces uh was making his big speech before mm -hmm. shooting the weapon for the first time and he was he was like we will crush this loathsome uh i can't do the accent uh his, we're gonna we're gonna destroy the republic this this uh you know hypocritical government that is all about disorder and they st support the 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 uh the hateful resistance uh with you know secretly mm -hmm. and so like apparently the republic is like you know, it, it, it seemed to me that the Republic maybe has a mandate to only have a military of a particular size or something mm, like that. Yeah. And so they're now supporting, like, the guerrilla fighters who maybe live in the, an area of the galaxy that I don't is really controlled by I, the well, First Order. I don't really understand why the top dogs of the Republic would be um, commanding the Resistance rather than their own armies. Well, I, I get the point. feeling that probably, like, Leia left the Republic in order to join the Resistance mm. to be, you know... Um, and if that wasn't kind of a, a, a flag for, for, you know, the local media and stuff to be like, okay, the Republic is probably, like, in cahoots with the Resistance here. Yeah. Maybe nobody actually cares. Maybe people actually like the Resistance. I don't know. Um, but we don't know where any of these people stand. No. Anyway. Um, <sighs> so Kylo Ren. <laughs> let's talk about his backstory for a minute because we're going to need that right they now. They missed an opportunity to, to use the line, I am your father. They really did. They really did. Because I'm what, so glad they didn't use it. What they did, <laughs> Han and Leia spend, you know, a good overall probably ten minutes talking about Han. You need to bring our son home. Which, for one, where is home? Because Han and Leia seem to have been separated for many years, and they don't seem to live anywhere right now. No, he's back to being a smuggler. She's back to being the leader of a resistance who probably move around every once in yeah, a while. Yeah, and are they going to start a family once they bring their son home? And they hid his name the whole time. Which is kind of useless, because, I mean, his name is Ben, yep. which we don't know on a character named Ben right now, besides old Ben Kenobi. Um, but later, Han confronts Kylo Ren, and he just shouts, Ben! Across, big echo. Big echo across this huge platform without any handrails, <laughs> uh, because they're obviously going to have a fight and they somebody's going to really fall in. They really love building those Yeah, in it's Star absolutely Wars. useless. Um. But they hid his name so long. It made for so many awkward interactions between Han and Leia. Have you heard from our son? Have you seen our son? Did you see our son? 
Leia's just going him, on and him, on. Him, 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 him. Leia's going on and on about our son, this and that. Like she's like she really wants to be a mother to him again. Um, but heaven forbid that we say his name. Yeah. <laughs> And, it, and it's not like it's not like they hid his name, yeah, because because it was going to suddenly reveal that he was their son. Yeah, his name that, wasn't his name wasn't Kylo. It, it's Ben. <laughs> we don't know who Ben is. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Have you seen Ben? Please bring our son home. Better, better. Yep. But who the hell is Ben? Where's Ben? What's Ben up to? Oh, he's Kylo Ren. Shit. He's been Whoops. a pretty naughty boy. We need to ground him for that house party that he yeah. threw last week and we need shattered our, the nice pottery. We need our 30-year-old son back so we can go back to being a happy family. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? That is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the good old days. Bring oh, our man. son home so we can, you know, have a nice family Thanksgiving. Like, <laughs> what? You haven't probably seen him in like twenty years. Oh, uh, not Thanksgiving, Life Day. Life Day, um, yeah. Obviously. Oh but, man. But why? Uh, uh, you already mentioned the stormtroopers walking away. Yeah. Oh, um. Uh, but uh, of course, Ben uh, is one of those details that they took from the expanded universe, mm-hmm. right? Sort of in a in a weird way. A very um, weird way. Yeah, well, kind of in a similar weird way to Star Killer Base, mm-hmm. right? Because Star Killer was. Uh, the original last name that George Lucas was going to use for Luke Skywalker, who's originally called Luke Skywalker, that seems kind of sinister for the protagonist. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So he scrapped that. Later, it was brought back in The Force Unleashed uh, because that was the the student who uh, uh, was found by Darth Vader while he was hunting Jedi, and he secretly raised this kid and trained him as his apprentice. Um, called him Star Killer. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Um, and then they. You know, took that and reused it to name a base that doesn't actually destroy stars. Well. I mean, okay, Star Destroyers don't destroy stars. The Death Star destroys planets. Star Killer, I mean, that seems rather explicit, but what? Okay, well, they whatever. do drain the star, which I That's didn't true, really yeah. understand. Did they drain it all the way because they didn't seem to move the planet? Right. They just drained the star, shot it off, like it became night. Yeah. But they, that's not how night works. They fired it once before. Four, did it become night that time and then the sun recovered itself? I don't remember it doing so. It just everything turned red and the planet was awash with energy. Mm-hmm. Like, but they drain the entire star. So how are you going to use your weapon again if you drain <laughs> your entire energy? Yeah, I don't think that it was a, an entire planet that they could move through hyperspace no. to another system. Um, so that didn't, that was yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, what were you talking about? Oh, yeah, Ben. Right, Ben's ben. name. Yeah, so Ben's name uh, kind of comes from... The, there wasn't even a Ben Solo in the Expanded Universe. The, the kids were uh, Jaden... Uh, J- Jason. Jason, Jaina. Jason, who Jaina. Who were twins. And Anakin. Yep, uh, who is the younger one. Mm-hmm. And there there was one of the Solo kids who turned to the dark side in the Expanded Universe mm-hmm. um, in, in Legends. Uh, so after Anakin died during the Yuuzhan Vong invasion... Um, Jason became quite distraught and uh, turned to the dark side in order to, I, th- I think, help fight the the people who, yes, the whole galaxy was against, but he was using terrible methods. Yes. And kind of became, yeah, against everybody else as well. Uh, and Ben was actually Ben Skywalker, who was the son of Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade Skywalker. Yeah. We need to bring her back. She was awesome. She was. And she had a good uh, storyline that kind of reflected the the fall of the empire and kind of the the merging of of these mm-hmm. you know the, the the culture that used to kind of have to exist under the empire can now be free and do what it wants um mm-hmm. basically it's a good let let timothy zahn write everything all of your stuff yep he, he should lead Please. he should lead the story group mm-hmm. yep um yeah, so, and then there was that Mon Calamari. <laughs> oh, man. I felt so bad for that, because when we watched it in the theater the first time, any time that, that that Mon Calamari spoke, everybody laughed. Yep. It's just a meme to it, them. It is, yeah. And especially since they, they weren't using line for line, but they were using very similar lines, mm-hmm. um, talking about, like... Uh, I, I think they were using slightly different words. So instead of like, we can't resist firepower of that magnitude, you know, it was like uh, that power of that level or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, the the size of the weapon or whatever. So, he yeah, he had similar things that he was talking yep. about. 
Um, I, I also actually noticed that um, the two, so there was the Mon Calamari and there was a Celestin in mm-hmm. that scene, uh, who were the two aliens. Their outfits, their costumes kind of looked awkward. Like, they didn't look like they were actual aliens. They looked like they were rubber masks on a human. Yeah, they they did. That was, well, a lot of the costuming was a little bit weird. Like, um, what's her name? Middle management. Uh, uh, Phasma? What, yeah. Uh, her costume was very sleek and didn't seem protective enough for a stormtrooper. It wasn't stormtrooper armor in chrome and black. It was. was sle- it, wasn't wasn't it, it the same? Uh, same like physical shape and everything. It was the same physical shape, but smaller. It was slimmer. Really? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't. I didn't take note of that. Um, and you know she's shiny and she has a cape. Yep. For some reason. Um, and then Kylo Ren. Uh. His form-fitting suit and his his helmet, that all looks good together. And then he takes off his helmet. His perfect, fluffy, beautiful, wonderful hair <laughs> pops out, you know, in in the form that hair should be after, you know, hours of styling. I'm surprised that he didn't do, like, the uh, Prince Charming, you know, whip it. Yeah, the hair flip. Um, he didn't have it in a ponytail or anything, and that's reasonable under helmet. Um but he takes it off, and that just makes his head look so big compared to his form-fitting suit, and it's just so bizarre to look at. He's also like the um, kind of the the stuff that was draped down over his legs. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know how you would describe it because it was kind of like it it was like a a dress that was slit through the middle, so it, it was two individual that you know left and right were separate, mm-hmm. so it actually kind of walked with his feet with his legs yeah it was Um, it was like a tunic split in the middle yeah and but it was like really really long and it looked like he could trip over it very very easily and and it looked ragged too like he looked Mm. he looked a mess yeah honestly get your get your stuff together man yeah goodness and and then he was oh my god that scene where he he had (sighs) the the interrogation scene yeah that the (sighs) that wasn't what i was about to say but that interrogation scene was he just didn't have the voice for it. No. He was a very, like, he sounded more like a therapist than an interrogator. And it was really bizarre. Goodness, I hope the therapists don't sound like that, because I was getting a really weird rape vibe from that scene. Well, yeah, that too. That too. Um, He was very, he was very touchy-feely, almost. Mm-hmm. Um, Very, he was in her head, in Ray's head. Um, It was really gross. He also didn't have the voice for it. <laughs> It was. I was so distracted by him not having a good voice for, for a um, bad guy. For for a bad guy, yeah. And I guess I'm sure his storyline is going to end up. It, they've already foreshadowed it very explicitly. He still has light in him. Yeah, uh, it's going to be so his he's, redemption story. He's, he's yeah. It's his redemption story. It's going to be very obvious, and it's going to be fast. That's that's the thing about the core movies in the Star Wars uh, franchise, right? Is it's always been the story of the Skywalker family, mm-hmm. um, and so we we've got at least one here that's obviously associated with the Skywalker family. Yes. He's Leia's son. Um, but I'm curious to see, like, are they going to tie Ray into that? Because they they had a few, you know, kind of hints at that. The the lightsaber, Luke's lightsaber, calling mm-hmm. to her um, when she f- picks it up and ignites it to fight against Kylo Ren. Um, the Luke's musical cue mm-hmm. plays. Um, so that that was one of the things that I mentioned earlier that I didn't want to say for all the kids who didn't want to get yeah. the spoilers. And is she must be tied yeah but how is a different story because apparently she's just been abandoned by people that she was old enough to know as her family yeah and i can't i can't see any of the like main characters who we think that she could be tied with doing that to a child yeah no no would, not with their upbringing why would luke just leave a child on a desert planet yeah. he hated that the uh, the only kid it could she could only be Luke's. Yeah. At this point. Yep. She could only be Luke's because God, Leia wouldn't do that. She didn't do that to her own son. No. Nope. Um, and it's not like they didn't have the resources to keep their child. You know, it's yeah, not like they needed it, to give her up for adoption. If, if and if Luke was like, oh God, I can't, I can't, I need to go off and do my broody thing and whatever. My broody uh, thing. <laughs> I Leia would probably be like, give me that kid because she's not staying on tat- on Tatooine Beta. Um, <laughs> because you're being a dumbass, like yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's, they're probably gonna. It's probably a bait and switch. Yeah, you know they're they're setting us up to expect that she's uh, Luke's kid, but it's probably gonna turn out to be something else. 
But what else should, could she be? I don't know yet. That's the thing. I mean, I don't know what uh, theater going audiences thought about Luke and his mysterious father and this Vader guy. You know, yeah. how many people made the connection? I don't know. Did They didn't. Well, have... anybody who spoke German made the connection. Yeah, but, right. Um... It's just like Mr. Body or no, Mr. Corpse. Mr. Corpse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In that episode of uh, Pokemon. Yep. Um, also, also Finn's got kind of a, you know, a mysterious backstory. Mm -hmm. Um, he was taken from his family and raised as a stormtrooper. So it's possible for them to bring that into, into play as like a, a cool reveal. And um, wait, I don't remember who can activate lightsabers. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. It's Anybody? just a button. Okay. It's just a button. Um, however, only people who really have the force can, uh, build one. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like Finn's Finn's backstory is something that they might use as a reveal later, but I don't think that it's necessary. Yeah, it, if he's not connected to uh, force sensitives, he's not important. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, he's a good. He's a nice character. He's a good. Uh -huh. He's fun, but he is not important in the grand scheme of things if he's not involved with the force. He he worked as the uh, the reluctant hero and the uh, the love interest for our main Jedi person i think the bait and switch here was finn setting up as the main character oh during the trailers and everything yeah or just during the trailers oh, yeah. and during the movie yeah because halfway through oh shit we got force sensitive here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i wasn't surprised at all when we found out that she was force sensitive no not yeah. at all but <laughs> <laughs> um speaking of which how the heck did ray know about the force abilities that she yeah, ended up using she was like han solo you're you're a just i thought you were just a legend i thought this jedi stuff was just a myth and like how much did how much cultural education are you getting on a backwater scavenger planet? Yeah, um, that probably never saw a Jedi other than Luke possibly fighting in the Battle of Jakku. Yeah, um, so she she knows she can mind control people. She, I mean, she learned from Kylo Ren that she could push back into his mind. Yep, fine. Yep, but how does she know how to do the hand wave? Uh oh the the like you will yeah. leave the door open yeah. and yada yada. How does she just pull that out of thin air? I uh I mean it's yeah it's not a super tenuous uh connection to make. Yeah. Uh, but 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 at the same time it's like she got it on her third try. Yeah. You know. Um. So I mean they're they're really really setting her up as this incredible prodigy. Mm -hmm. Uh. Just like so. like we know Leia's force sensitive. Yeah. And but yeah. it took her in extent expanded universe years of training to be mm -hmm. actually competent enough that she could defend herself and use her force abilities uh proactively yeah and and since we know that like the skywalkers are uh the the strongest force sensitive bloodline mm -hmm. it, in existence right yeah uh how, who is she that she was able to push back into kylo ren's yeah. mind who is He's definitely been trained to do this he's been born to do this yeah he's had lots of practice and like you know okay well shoot training she, she from both sides apparently yeah so i mean yeah once uh she's met luke now so i guess she can do anything now yeah whatever he's yoda now yeah uh no actually the yoda figure was i i know i know yeah i i like her i want more of her don't remember her name no, no. um yeah yeah but <laughs> small uh the eyes lady the eyes lady yeah <laughs> uh but luke's gonna be her trainer luke yeah maybe he's gonna be obi-wan who is he i don't yeah yeah but how, how uh, reluctant is he gonna be to get back into the game probably yeah. really reluctant yeah because apparently from what we gather kylo ren went on <laughs> excuse my esophagus wow <laughs> <laughs> kylo ren he, he was um, choking you that's what's going on right yeah. there yeah Trying not to let me say this. <laughs> um, so, where are the Jedi? Where are the Jedi? All we can gather is that uh, Kylo Ren went all Anakin on their asses and murdered them all. Yep. That that's not. Did we get that explicitly? No. But I can't think of any other reason that Luke would just give up on everything and leave. Yeah. Yeah. But how is there ever? How is he going to redeem himself from that? so recently because he's not <laughs> older than 35 uh yeah that's true that's true yeah so it's been maybe what 15 years mm -hmm. since that kind of thing happened mm -hmm. um, and who else did he kill who all did he did he um was did luke have any children that were involved in that 
Did he um, did, did he send Ray away to protect her? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, gosh, why do these always have to be a desert planet? Oh. Yeah, I know. So useless. Send her to Dantooine. Just yeah, be a little bit more creative. It's, it's, it'd be, let her be she'll a She'll be a nerf cow. herder. She'll be a nerf herder, yeah. Yeah. That would be that would <laughs> That'd be, a be entertaining. <laughs> um so speaking of, you know, meeting Luke and Luke doing all this shit. Ugh, my language. Um <laughs> <laughs> You just get so worked up about it. I do. Uh Mark Hamill uh stands on a cliff for a while, lowers his hood, looks stands, at, stands looks really worried while um while Ray like Holds a lightsaber at him. Stands. Li- unlit. Just, you know, hand trying to hand him his lightsaber. Like, take it, dude. She- her arm's getting tired. Stairs. Stairs. Yeah. Um, Do we mention that he stands? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stands. Stairs. He literally doesn't say a word. Nope. Um, He's the second name that comes up in the credits. Yeah. Like, Harrison Ford, then Mark Hamill. And all of this is going on while there's this weird looking helicopter shot that belongs in like a spy movie it was going all around this island just zooming around <laughs> on these two people standing well he well mark hamill stands there stares and looks mildly worried yep like <sighs> and and not only was that shot that helicopter shot uncharacteristic of star wars as a whole but they hadn't done anything like that at all in the rest of the movie right. so i don't i it was. It did not fit. Yeah. That whole ending did not fit. It didn't. If it had ended with Ray zooming off, we're gonna go look for Luke now. Fine, fine. That. But they found. That'll Luke. carry us into the next yes. movie. Yes. But they found Luke. They found him real fast. Yeah. <laughs> he he wasn't hiding. He was standing on top of an island. He's probably been doing that for fifteen years. <laughs> he stank. <laughs> he turns around and he's like. Man, my feet are killing me. <laughs> this standing job is really hard. <laughs> but yeah, and if we had ended on that, if we had gone like, all right, establishing Finn, establishing Ray, um, going as them taking off in the Falcon, getting captured by Han, um, cantina scene, uh, Yoda figure lightsaber calling to me, um, battle of the. Star Killer, mm-hmm. um, and then go winning, finding Luke. That could have been over in an hour, and we could have had a good movie on our hands. Yeah, and, and especially if they wanted to uh, kind of really use the formula of of A New Hope, right? Mm-hmm. You get the climax, you blow up the big thing, yeah. you fly back, you land, everybody's happy, you have a celebration scene. Yes. End. Yeah. No, we don't go like. Oh, surprise, uh, R2-D2's awake now, and oh, look, he's got, like, a map, and oh, we, it fits with the rest of the map, and oh, hey, you gotta go off and do that thing, oh, you gotta say goodbye to Finn, we gotta, you know, no, you say, all this stuff. If you are going to end like that, you say, look, R2-D2, R2-D2's got a map, BB-8's hologram fits right in there, oh, Whoa. look at that, and then you leave on, uh, Ray leaves on her ship, and she goes to find Luke, like, she's, it should end in hyperspace. It should have ended her mm-hmm. taking off to hyperspace because she's obviously going to go find Luke and hyperspace into credits. Yeah. Yeah. The only the only thing that I can really say that that was uh, a positive about that that scene um, is that it gave us the connection between. Uh, so if you recall when when Kylo Ren was interrogating her mm-hmm. and he was in her mind and he was talking about. Uh, when she was back mm. on Jakku feeling lonely, if she, you know, she was feeling bad, she would imagine this ocean and she mm-hmm. would, and he was like, I see the island. Yeah. Which means that this is like her happy place where she stays. Yes. The significance of the island. And that oh, would have been. find Luke on an island. Yes. That would have been fine if it had happened an hour into the movie. <laughs> um, and it, she, her finding Luke on the island does give an indication that if this is her happy place, where is she getting this image from? Yeah. She has never been there, as far as we know, from her memories uh, that were revealed when she the lightsaber was calling to her. Um, we didn't. We saw maybe a glimpse of the island as her happy place, but I don't think she's been there as a child when yeah. her childhood memories were going through. Um, so, so Luke and her she, must have had a connection. They have a through, connection. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. She's Luke's daughter that got sent off to protect her from Kylo Ren. Yep. They Theory chose done. the most awful person to leave her with. You know, yeah, like whoever like, that was that abandoned her. Luke Luke got left with his aunt and uncle. And sure, 
he was a farm boy. He had to do a lot of work. But, mm-hmm. like, he was with a, a loving uh, couple who, I mean, admittedly, they weren't really used to, like, being parents. They yeah. never had any kids of their own. Uh, but, but, like... they figured it out. They figured they it got, out, just like all parents on. do, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, uh, he was a whiny teenager. They weren't letting him go to the academy. Oh, well. You know, whatever. But he put her on a scavenger planet... With some crafty people who have later abandoned her. Well, no, actually, I, so or got you, taken away. Taken away. If probably. you listen closely to the, mm-hmm. the voice that's saying, "Like, be quiet, girl," as she's crying because her family's yeah. leaving, I'm pretty sure that it was the guy. The uh, this is worth one quarter portion. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the same guy. Okay, so her family is abandoning her. She doesn't know who her family is, really. Yeah, maybe. Um, and they leave her with a guy who's going to just make her, work her Yeah, for, not even a yeah. kind man. No, no. no. Like you she's got on, so many contacts throughout the galaxy. She's on the same planet as somebody who's described as an old ally, and who? Oh well, maybe he wasn't there at the time. But you know, like she. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh, I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> the more it, I think about this, the so more I dumb. hate it. So dumb. Oh man. Okay, so now that now that you've heard us get thoroughly exasperated, I think we've actually been getting louder and louder as the episode goes on. I've Probably. been watching our levels go up, but I can't adjust them because otherwise it makes static noises because of our lovely uh, um, uh, uh, soundboard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so now that now that you know uh, how we feel about it, um, yeah, feel free to uh, tear tear us apart uh, by sending us. Uh, some feedback with that link once again if you go to the nexus.tv slash so3 you'll see a contact link over on the right side of the page or if you're on a mobile device it'll probably be towards the bottom because we've got nice responsive design mm-hmm. hey um last thing i think is uh where can we find you on the internet i am eternally anna on twitter and literally everything else uh, and I am Ian R. Buck most places, including Twitter. Um, and uh, I've actually been pretty active on my YouTube channel doing like unboxing things of, of electronics. And, You'll uh, be entertained by plates. more than him. Yes, right. Because everyone who walks through our house is a guest. Yeah, all of my housemates make it into there somehow. Uh, so, uh, thanks for listening uh, to Second Opinion. Remember, these are all perfectly objective uh, opinions. Oh, there, there is no, we're, we're never wrong. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> forget about arguing with us. Uh, <laughs> see you later. Thanks for joining us. Bye.